Greetings. My name is Lily Cat William Laughlin Rose, and I live on the west coast of the United States of America. Today, I read a newspaper article. Um, that shared the, the information that a British MP named James Heapy <clears throat> told Told a British schoolgirl in a comment that he said he in, he'd intended as a joke to fuck off back to Scotland when she revealed that she would vote for independence if the matter came up again. if it came up on the ref uh, second rec referendum. <clears throat> I have to say, Mr. Heapy, that As a being with mixed British ancestry myself, the fact that you, a man in public office, spoke spoke such an unfortunate joke to a teenager disappointed me a great deal I'm half Hungarian on the paternal side On the maternal side, I have ancestors from Roxbury, London, that came to the to what would become the United States, the East Coast, around the 1670s. One of my ancestors. A William Heath. I can trace back to where England. And around the fifteen hundreds. <clears throat> I want to tell you something. I grew up. watching BBC watching <clears throat> of course the requisite number of Disney movies including Mary Poppins and absolutely burying myself well gladly willingly and thirstily
in historical fiction and or fiction written during historical periods. Including including the work <clears throat> of late Victorian and early Edwardian British or British colonial authors or authoresses. Sir, I I read David Copperfield cover to cover in eighth grade before high school. And for a long, long, long time, there's a part of me I always felt like Britain was my home and that England was my home and your words were an utter disappointment not not sir because of whatever political opinion you hold. But because you spoke that way to a school child, a teenager, somebody, somebody who under the right circumstances Under the right circumstances, with just the right approach from you, might have actually found herself looking up to you, at least as a person, or as someone, a politician that whether she agreed with him or not she could respect if you had handled it better. I'll tell you one thing. In my country's politics, I'm a liberal. And I'm differently liberal enough. That in some certain in some few ways, I'm progressive even for the progressives, albeit in a different way. And I'm telling you one thing. When I was a high schooler, I was already at that point pretty much leaning Dem Democrat. I was in my high school's string orchestra and I had the pleasure And the, oh my God, wow. While participating in my string orchestras, serving as <clears throat> the music for Martin Luther King Day, banquet event that Colin Powell was speaking at to hear him talk. Colin Powell, according to our country's politics, leaned Republican. And this was before This was before I first registered to vote. And this was a few years before, before W. Bush 
even ran for office. And you know what, sir? Colin Powell gave a speech at that banquet that impressed me still 17. So much with his character the obvious feel of his strong moral character his mind as well as his speaking ability and his honor and his heart that I decided then I might be more liberal than he is but if I ever hated the Democrat for whatever reason and Colin Powell were the one running on the Republican ticket. And I didn't see another candidate. That I thought would do better, I would vote for him. And he did that when I was already at a point at which I was fairly thoroughly leftist and considering when I voted registering as socialist. I am very thankful, sir. that you wrote a letter of apology to that young woman, to that teenager, that schoolgirl. I'm very glad. And I hope, I hope that you fucking meant it. Because in my country, if one of our politicians on any side had said that or similar, to a non-voting age teenager, to a school to a school kid. They would have had every e-activist breathing down their necks and they would have had absolutely been barraged Not just their own inbox, but their fellow politicians from every objector to those words across political lines. Not just, not just because you said words, not just because they said words like that in public or effectively in public, but they said it to a child. In America, children, teenagers, who are under 18 
are automatically a political minority. And and a politician, whether whether that politician was male, female, or an alien from outer space. who insulted a school child. <sighs> Would probably be sharing front page news with the worst of the critiques currently against Trump if that happened here. I'm telling you this not to piss you off and not not to put you down not to hurt you but to offer you a perspective from a fellow Brit to happen to grow up here. Who happens to have his first language be Hungarian in the tongue and one of my heart's and soul's primary languages being a, being a significantly older period of English than the one current now. And I wanted to offer you the opportunity to think about 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 your action from someone who had a chance when around that school girl's age to hear a politician speak that actually was significantly more conservative than I was or in at the time who was nevertheless favorably impressed by that man's character and I'm very sorry sir that in doing, in saying what you did to that girl in front of her, even if you'd meant it as a joke, both that your joke was that misplaced and that too 
you lost in that particular moment a social, political, moral, and psychological opportunity. To impress a young woman and a future voter with your character. Favorably with your character, even if she continued to disagree with you. Please think about that. Bless you. Lily Cat William Laughlin Rose West Coast.